Hi everybody and welcome to this video about uh, new some kind of work in progress uh, PowerShell module which is able to attach the NSPY debugger on specific process name. Uh, for now it's just some kind of PowerShell module, it's not complete but it's just like work in progress, more like playing, uh, but it depends really on your interest, whenever you will feel like it could be uh, interesting enough, uh, useful, I will probably convert it to .NET EXE file, uh, like via C Sharp. And uh, how does it work? It actually works something like uh, in the same way like GFlex. Uh, it's able to monitor uh, the spawn processes and you will basically uh, specify the process name you can use wildcard and whenever this process uh, which which basically match the process name you specified uh, is created uh, the NSPY debugger is attached to this and it will break on the module loading and other things so it could be quite a handy it's basically how you can attach debugger automatically and something like registering uh, the NSPY debugger for now it's not complete it's just some kind of idea it could be quite useful so uh, you can see here is the PowerShell module uh, I won't be explaining how does it work but it's quite a, a simple uh, for now it's not really not, it's not complete but it's using like uh, anti-suspend uh, process anti-resume process and other things and uh, whenever it finds the interesting process or uh required process or you you wanna the process you will put as an argument um uh, pass as an argument it will spawn the dnsp dnspy and uh, specific dnspy version according to the architecture of the target so yep that's it probably something like that so what i prepared is an example i prepared here uh here is an infection chain of async red and here is basically this is infection chain of, of async red but what it's here is a powershell module which is one of the uh, powershell powershell script which is one of the stage from the uh, async red infection and this powershell script contains two exe files two .NET modules two .NET assemblies uh, and especially one is uh, injector and the second one is async red uh, the injector is performing the pe injection like pe hollowing and uh, async red is injected to the target uh, process name so uh we can check actually the script here is very simple oh sorry Ta -da. Yep. here you can see here are some 45a you know probably what does it mean and ends it encode it in some way but what you can see here is some system reflection assembly so there is some reflection and loading the assembly here and what it actually loads it loads uh, the injector and the injector is invoking method called execute but you can't see it because it's encoded and it will execute uh, and it uh, the, it, it will invoke the method called name like execute and uh, it uh, takes two arguments one is the uh, path uh, which will be like the pe used for the pe hollowing and the content which will be like inject to this process so here is the content which is async red and here you can see the path which will be used for the PE injection. So there will be used the legitimate uh, exe file asnet underscore compiler dot exe. So we can actually grab the asnet because the PowerShell module for now it takes wildcards. So we can just copy that, close that, and we will be using the this one PowerShell module. So let's import it. Import module. Now invoke attach the NSPY where the process name is or contains 
the ASP.NET. Now, whenever hit, you hit enter, it will start monitoring ASP.NET to FHD and SPI debugger. Nice. So what we can do next, we actually need to spawn, uh, execute this uh, script, which will be uh, loading the injector and spawning new process in suspended state, uh, injecting some things to that and other things, other things. So what you can do, you can actually do something like that. And you can, oh, sorry, stage executed. Whenever you do that, you can see that DNSPY was attached to the process. What you can see in the second window of process uh, of PowerShell, you can see monitoring SNET, trying to suspend it, suspicious process is suspended, target is 32 bit. It recognized that it will recognize the architecture, and according to the architecture, it will spawn the like attach the specific DNSPY version, like DNSPY 32 bit or 64 bit. So, yeah. And the process is resumed, but uh, as you can see, we applied some kind of settings here. And the settings is actually doing that uh, the process is uh, suspended. Something like on the module loading, uh, there is like module loading breakpoints. Uh, you can see it here. Let's continue. And we have here the aspect, but be careful because there was performed the P injection. So if you double click on it, uh, it depends on your settings, but here the default settings is that uh, debug files are loaded uh, from the disk space. So debug files loaded from the process memory unchecked to use disk files. So disk files are the default option. So it doesn't matter that there is like uh, the content of the main module is uh, replaced. It basically grabs the content from the disk. So what you can do, you can check also that the, there is really, really, really some kind of PE injected that you can see that here is some kind of uh, the asset compiler is here, <laughs> pretty strange base. OK, but here you can see that something was injected on the typical module base. And this is actually the uh, async thread. You can see the uh, protection read uh, write execute. So uh, let's close all of the all of this and right click on it. And in the context menu, you can see open module from the memory. It will just perform the opening the module from the memory and not from the disk space. So you can see it's uh, open from the disk uh, from the memory, and you can put some breakpoints here. But be careful; you won't be able to put breakpoints everywhere because what you can see here, for example, here you can see that you can't. Yeah, you can't set breakpoint here. Why? Because the code is optimized. Uh, I don't want to tell you now or explain what is code optimization. Opt optimization is like what is it, what it is doing because it will be covered in my next video. Uh, it's basically it will basically modify it in some way the code uh, before the like uh, before the compilation so uh, it will be a little bit different and what it uh, what is the result of this is basically you can't get some local variables values you, you can't set breakpoints on some points because uh, this uh, like this structure of a function could be modified like uh, some function could be inlined some code could be inlined and other things so yeah that's pretty more advanced but we i will cover in next video so what you can see we set some breakpoints here and whenever you can try to try to continue yeah we hit the breakpoint and you check the locals and you can see the i variable and other things so we can actually put the breakpoint here and let's continue we are here, continue, continue, and we are somewhere here. And now you can actually normal debug it. I don't know what it is. Yep. So something like that. We can actually go to process and uh, terminate the process.
But what I wanted to show you that uh, with this kind of proof of concept tool, we are able to attach debugger on specified newly spawned process name, uh, which doesn't have to actually exit uh, exist yet. And uh, yeah, it could be quite useful. So now you can actually save it, save module to some location like desktop, save, okay, file, close, file, open, desktop, yep, here, main, and you can perform some kind of independent debugging. But this was actually, yeah, sorry, I have uh, breakpoints on module loading, and here we, we hit the breakpoint. So everything works. Uh, again, this is some kind of work in progress. Uh, it's all about the module like invoke attach dnspy, where we can actually attach the dnspy debugger to some specific uh, process name we want to debug. Yeah, because there is no way to register it like gflex, there is no way to uh, uh, register it in like a just-in-time debugger, so this is some kind of workaround for now. Uh, for now, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like it, uh, please some kind of thumbs up or comments that it's some kind of interesting thing. You are, uh, you found it useful because I will actually know that I can work on it and produce something more like with graphical user interface and other things. Thank you for watching and see you next time.